And for more, we're joined by Volker Treyer from the German Chambers of Industry and Commerce. Amazing things that can be done with ceramics these days. Um, are there any other products that are reinvented in such a fashion? Manufacturers, they, they and their products are always under, under pressure of, of uh, the customer, customer behavior, of the technological change. And uh, we produced, for instance, uh, uh, in, the, in the textile industry only uh, for clothing 30 years ago, 20 years ago. But then we, we had a radical change that we can use uh, textiles also to produce cars or to, to mix uh, some textiles for the production of cars, for, for the production of bridges, of aircrafts, just to have lighter materials and nevertheless firm materials. Now, the example we've seen uh, in the report were high-tech components uh, for biomedical solutions. I should imagine that's quite expensive. So how big a market uh, is the biomedical market? It is an increasing market. I would say it's a, it's a mega topic that aging society brings changes and necessity to change uh, in the production, but also in the products. And the, the, for instance, uh, the producers of medical uh, engineering, uh, they came out of the crisis very quick and they uh, haven't fallen such as deep as other branches, for instance, during the crisis. How big a player is Germany in terms of high-tech solutions? I would say we are one of the, the best uh, players and this is due to that we have international and internationalized our production that we have sought for the cu customers abroad, not only in Germany. We are a decreasing uh, society, a decreasing population in Germany and that means that the market uh, will shrink and therefore uh, we did it quite well to go abroad, to build up plants there and uh, to go to the customer. Well, Volker Dreyer, thank you very much for the moment because we'll be back with you in just a short moment. Speaking of growing markets, powerhouse China is an important market for German car makers. The question is how long before Daimler or BMW or Volkswagen will have a major Chinese stakeholder? After all, Chinese investors are buying up companies around the world, increasing China's influence on the global economy and bringing with them their cultural values and leadership style, sometimes with surprising results. We visited a Chinese-owned company operating here in Germany and took a look at what happens when two very different cultures meet. It's the early shift at Min Metals near Bremen. In this Chinese-owned company, everybody pitches in when necessary. Germans and Chinese work together. The staff of 21 make sheets of stainless steel, which are used, for example, for commercial kitchens. The production manager is from Germany, and the logistics manager is from China. People talk openly and directly at this firm. This can't be taken for granted as management style in China is very different from that in Germany. In China, the boss is king. And when the boss says something, the staff do exactly that. But here in Germany, ordinary staff members make lots of good suggestions. Still, the parent company in China keeps a close eye on its German subsidiary. When I was purchasing manager at other companies, I used to be able to make my own decisions within the constraints of my budget. I'd clear it with my boss, and that was that. Here it's different. First I make a cost-benefit analysis, then I go to my boss, who is German, and then he goes to the Chinese director, and they discuss it. Upstairs in the booking department, the controller, Xiang Xiangyi, and the director go through the accounts together every month. Headquarters in Beijing check all the figures in quite some detail, too. But apart from that, says Xia, who was born in Germany, the European subsidiaries have considerable freedom. She would have a hard time dealing with the traditional Chinese management style. It's very strictly top-down management. 
gewöhnungsbedürftig. Sagen It takes mal. some getting used to. Man kann nicht sagen, dass die Entscheidungen, die gefällt worden sind, falsch sind. I can't say the decisions are wrong. Freie, ja. But I'm not sure how much scope there is to express opinions. Ich weiß nicht, wie viel Raum da gelassen wird. On the shop floor, it's time for a break. The workers, German and Chinese, chat over breakfast about everyday matters, such as the price of fuel, which is soaring. If somebody new comes to work here, they have to get used to either the German or the Chinese mentality. We Germans tend to be a bit gruff and direct. The Chinese mentality is much more cautious and careful. They're more diplomatic and less blunt. We say things straight out, whatever the cost. If I have a problem, I now go straight to my German colleague and complain. Or we look for a solution together, instead of avoiding issues. I call that cooperation. I like it, really. It's not a problem for me anymore. There is a division of labor at the German subsidiary that works well. German staff deal with customers in the region, while Chinese staff deal with headquarters. That would not be possible without trust. When they get together and talk in Chinese about who knows what, then we're excluded. They could shut themselves off from us completely if they wanted to. But they don't. The boss regularly holds workshops with the entire team. They're briefed on how the company is doing, and they discuss problems and brainstorm about possible solutions to keep the communication flowing and help maintain a good and open atmosphere at the company. And we're back again with Volker Treyer from the German Chambers of Industry and Commerce. Would you say that the example we've just seen here in the report is representative for German-Chinese corporate relations? No, it is not. Uh, we have a lack of uh, Chinese investments in, in Germany. Uh, the other way around is that we have invested a lot abroad uh, in China and uh, we carried out a survey by the German uh, entrepreneurs, and they said that the, the destination country number one uh, this year for German direct investments uh, will be China, and, and this shows uh, that the fear of Chinese investors is, is uh, exaggerated in, in Germany. So the fear of Chinese investors is exaggerated. I also believe that we do have a graphic ready for it. Perhaps we can see it in just a short while, showing exactly the figures that you implied. We have the exact figures here, the latest ones, which show that China invested 600 million euros in Germany, whereas Germany invested more than 15 billion euros in China. So that is quite a difference. Uh, asking from another point of view, what's so exciting about China? Why do we invest there so much? China is an amazing, huge market with, let's say, more or less favorable uh, economic uh, conditions. And uh, in our survey, uh, the German investors, they said, we want to go to China to explore and develop the market. And it is to less extent uh, the cost uh, advantage. We have a cost advantage in China, labor costs are, are lower. But this is not, not the point uh, of motivation of the German firms. It's the market, the huge markets with more or less stable and favorable economic conditions. Stable when it comes to the economy. What about the political conditions? Is that something that business turns a blind eye to, not just with China? Yeah, to some extent, uh, a company for itself has to be kind of opportunistic, uh, we have to admit, because when 
this firm says, okay, I don't go to China, I don't go to Egypt or elsewhere, uh, then other uh, competitors will do it. So therefore we need political decisions to say, either to say yes or no to a production location. Volker Dreyer, thank you very much.